Are you considering a government job? It can be a confusing process. I'm gonna give you the eight steps it takes to get a government job. Let's get into it. Before we get started, you need to know what kind of job is it that you want? And it doesn't matter what your experience is necessarily. You could have been in the military, retail, banking, insurance, or maybe you're a fresh graduate coming out of the university. It doesn't matter. Almost every government job involves administration and communication. So there's something out there for pretty much everyone. To start figuring out what it is that you want to do, you need to open the OPM job series handbook and you will find every type of job the government offers. And there's over a thousand of them. It's okay to pick two or three job series, but you have to have some idea on what you will be qualified for. Now that you've done that, it's time to move on to the first step. The first step is creating your resume. This is a crucial step because if you have an ineffective or a weak resume, then the rest of the steps don't even matter. The rest of this video doesn't even matter. You need to make sure that you have this step down. A federal resume is not the same as a private sector resume. And I've done videos in the past, I've done three, four, or five different videos that talk about not only the difference, but what you should consider when you're creating your federal resume. When you hear people complain about how difficult the federal hiring process is, more often than not, it's because they have a substandard, weak resume that they're applying with. And because this step is so important, I created a course that provides a federal resume template, salary negotiations, interview tips. At the end of the course, I provide a review and give you feedback to improve your chances of attaining federal government employment. If you're interested, then check out the link below in the description. The next step is setting up your search filter. This will help filter and focus on the jobs and locations you actually want. You can select the location, the job series, and the GS grade. You can do this and have a notification send you an email on a routine basis, whether that's daily, weekly, or monthly, and it will inform you of new jobs that interest you that you should be qualified for. I also recommend whatever local area you live in, try to go ahead and include that larger city that might be near you in order to have more results. And you can also always look at the remote work option. There's usually between 400 and 500 jobs that you can find under remote only. And these jobs can be done anywhere in the United States. The next step is to search for the government jobs. When you are searching, pay attention to the time frame that job announcements open. Sometimes jobs are open for just 24 hours, 48 hours. Maybe it's a week, a month. It could even be a year. When you find the word roster, if, if the word roster is in the title of the job announcement, usually that's an announcement that's designed to collect resumes for an upcoming opening job position. So maybe the job isn't even created yet, but you can apply to those roster lists and that agency can use your resume for one or more future job openings. Then you'll have some job announcements that will close after so many applications. So there are some that say after 25 resumes, they're gonna shut it down. Or after 50 people apply or 100 people, and I think the most I've ever seen was about 200 people. Once they hit that threshold, they will close the job announcement. Also these job announcements, they will tell you if a drug test is required. And also it'll tell you what level of risk the position is. This is important because if you have a low risk position or a medium risk position, the background check usually does not take as long. If you have a high risk position or if it says required secret clearance or top secret clearance, you can expect the hiring process or the background check to take a little bit longer, especially with the top secret clearance requirement. When you find a job announcement that interests you, you always have the option to save it and come back at a later date in order to fill it out. Which brings us to our next step, apply to the job. As you are applying, you will have to select what resume to use because you can upload multiple resumes into usajobs.gov. You'll also have to select your supporting documentation. So you'll select your transcript or your performance appraisal or your SF50 or your SF15. Make sure you have all that select and then proceed to the next step. You also wanna make sure that you're reading that entire job announcement because oftentimes there are required documents you must include or you have to give a reason on why they're not included or you'll be disqualified. So read that entire thing, pick up the required documents. After that, you'll be taken to the questionnaire. Now on the questionnaire, you need to make sure that you're marking you're highly proficient or an expert in the task. If you are not an expert, 
then you really shouldn't be applying for the job. You want to make sure that your proficiency level is so high that you can consider yourself an expert at the task. So if you're applying for an analyst position, they'll say, how proficient are you at analyzing documents? You need to mark down that you're an expert at analyzing documents. Because if you do not do this, you can risk disqualifying yourself. Once you get used to filling out these job applications, it'll take you about 15 or 20 minutes to knock one out. And I would encourage you to keep applying. Don't just settle for one or two. Remember, like in fishing, the more poles, the more lines you have in the water, the greater your probability of catching a fish. So you wanna make sure you have a lot of lines in the water, which means a lot of applications submitted. The next step is receiving a referral. Now I believe with a targeted job search, you should be seeing about a 50% referral rate on your applications. So that means if you apply 10 times to 10 different job announcements, at least five of those should come back as referrals. And if it doesn't, that means your resume could potentially be weak. You need to look at it or have someone else look at it. Understand that a referral does not guarantee you an interview. So do not be upset if you get a referral and there's no interview. I know it's exciting because it feels like we're actually making some meaningful progress when you receive that referral email. But you have to think of it as a two-stage event. So the first stage is your resume has to be good enough in order to get that referral. The second stage is your resume has to be good enough to get the interview. So you're competing on two different stages. I have found that when it comes to referrals and interviews, you should see about a 20% interview rate on your referrals. So 50% referral rate on your applications and then a 20% interview rate on those referrals. The next step is the interview. This could be virtual or in person, but it more than likely will be a cold, impersonal experience. And this is because the panel has to write down everything that you're saying. So there'll be a disconnect. It will not go smoothly. You'll try to establish some rapport and be charismatic and you'll find out it's kind of like talking to a group of robots, if you can imagine that. Use the format STAR, Situation, Task, Action, Result, and try to communicate your value. Ask meaningful, thoughtful questions at the end of the interview. Okay, so if you made it through the interview, then the next step is the tentative job offer. This will come either through email or phone or both. Oftentimes you will have to log into usajobs.gov and actually accept the job offer in there. And once you've done that, you'll have a bunch of onboarding type documents that you have to fill out. This is where the background check starts. This is where the credit check, this is where the fingerprints and the photo and all that other type of documents, that's where all of that is going to be required. You wanna make sure you're doing this stuff as quickly as possible. During this step, you can also negotiate your step level. And oftentimes you can negotiate your start date and your leave accrual rate. The next step is the final job offer. And if you made it this far, then congratulations. This means that your credit check went through, your background check went through, and you will be given an EOD date, which is entry on duty. It will tell you the first day of work. It'll probably have your supervisor's name and a location. Now, like I said earlier, keep in mind that you can negotiate that start date. There was one time I actually negotiated my start date to start three weeks into the future. If you haven't reached the eighth step, then don't worry. Stay persistent, stay consistent, stay determined, keep applying. Look at that resume, work on it, keep applying. A lot of people get frustrated with this whole process and I don't blame you, I got frustrated myself. But if you wanna know why you're not getting referrals or interviews, when you feel like you've done everything right, then I wanna share some advice for you. And if you wanna know what that is, watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.